Hey guys, and welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. My name is Shauna. If you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four who focuses on secular curriculum and curriculum choices. We come here and we share um, along our, this is our sixth year homeschooling journey. You guys know, if you are not new here, that we have two girls, a first and a fifth grader. Today, I wanted to pop on and take a rare opportunity when a national day that piques my interest um, happens to align with my regular posting schedule. I wanted to come on and I wanted to share with you guys about STEM day. And I specifically want to focus on easy and early introduction to STEM. Guys, before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find us right on down to the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. Like I said, this is our sixth year of homeschooling. However, we are parents, and we are parents, I am certain if you are here and you are watching this, much like you, who've always placed a very strong value on education. And again, if you're here, you probably are pretty like-minded like me, and you know that everything, everything can be education. I just wanted to pop on and talk with you today, taking an opportunity for a perfect alignment of the stars that National STEM Day happens to align with my regular posting schedule, which I'm so excited about. So is this what I had intended to share today? No, but are we sharing it today? Yes. Why is that? Because you guys know I like a theme. I like a theme, I like a celebration, and I love the novelty of things. And since today is National's STEM slash STEAM Day, I thought it would be a wonderful time to talk about STEM slash STEAM. Now you guys know we do have two girls and I have said this in the past. There's a lot of research out there that talks about the massive importance of getting girls especially everyone, but especially girls, a solid focus in math and science early on so that by the time, again, scientifically proven that their confidence in those subjects starts to dip at eight years old, they can have a good and solid grasp of their ability in those topics. It's very near and dear to my heart, as I am sure it is to many of yours. So how do we do that? How do we introduce STEM things early? And STEM, STEM, STEAM, I'll probably use STEAM because I like STEAM better. If you are don't know, which I'm sure you do, because again, you're here and we're buddies. Uh, STEM is, STEAM is, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Now, that may seem like a really kind of advanced and crazy subject to be talking about, especially in the early years, but guess what, guys? It's not. Do you know why it's not? Because it's easily introduced in the early years. You may be wondering, Shauna, how, how can I easily introduce this in the early years? And that feels like that feels like some weighty topics and that's giving me a lot of pressure. Guess what guys? It doesn't have to be hard. It genuinely doesn't. You know what science is. Science is answering the how and the why of the things, right? You know what technology is. You may be thinking, man, iPads, cell phones, computers. No, technology is any man-made instrument, okay? So technology could be this hair tie that I have going on up here or my fancy watch with a screen. Technology can be anything, a lever, um, a pulley system. That is technology. Engineering is how to put those things together. Arts, you guys know what those are. And math, again, you know what that is. So how can you easily introduce this early? And what do I mean by early? Guys, believe it or not, babies are often simply figuring these things out on their own. If you give children the opportunity to start learning how to problem solve, there is a study, I'll see if I can find it and link it down below, that shows that this the ability to problem solve actually increases confidence because you know you can do it, like you know you got this. So it's really important to let your kids kind of problem, like solve their own problems. And this does start as young as with babies because babies are wondering how the world works. They are then experimenting with how the world works, okay? If they drop something, they really are experimenting with physics, which I know that sounds really extreme and really crazy, but genuinely, it is as basic as that. Babies can easily be introduced to all kinds of STEAM topics because being able to show, show me one, hand me one block. Um, here is some finger paint. 
Um, there's all kinds of ways that children, even as young as infants, can be introduced to STEAM topics. So don't think that this has to be some massively heavy and crazy thing. There's also a ton of amazing companies out there, one of which is Osmo, which you guys know. We were recently finally got our hands on some after years of being on the fence and kind of thinking about it. But Osmo is a company who is focusing heavily on taking a multi-sensory approach, which is going to stick better with your kiddos to being able to give them something tangible to play with, but also a screen to have the results show up on. It's kind of amazing the uh, approach that Osmo does take. And one of the things that they do focus on, because think about it, think about all of their products, they're all focusing on furthering the STEAM qualities for kids. Now, you may be thinking, um, STEAM is one of those things, you know, my kid's not gonna be an engineer, we probably don't need that, okay? My kid's not gonna be um, <clears throat> a math teacher, we don't need to focus on that, okay? My kid's not gonna be a biologist, we don't need to focus on that. That is absolutely untrue, guys. I went to school, you guys know, my profession uh, back before this life was a hairstylist. The amount of chemistry that went into being a hairstylist is kind of mind-boggling and staggering. So had I not had exposure to the science of that, had I not had exposure to the art of that, simply knowing how to counteract, you know, warm gold tones by using purple. I mean, those are things that you wouldn't think would be you know, heavy and esteem focus, but genuinely are. So don't limit yourself, don't limit your kids. Be sure to focus on that early introduction. And it's so much easier than you think, especially with products like from Osmo. Now, ideally they're focusing on five to 12, but you guys know I'm the person who thinks outside of the box and I'm like, you know what? I don't use things always as prescribed, and I am certain that with a little bit of help, a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with your kiddo, you really can help them enjoy some of these products much younger. Um, I personally like that some of the kits that they have available, for example, the coding starter kit, it, it spreads in age from five all the way to 10, which means the ideal range suits both of my children who are not close together in age, who are not close together in grade level, because that genuinely spans the elementary years. So my daughter's in fifth grade and she's 10, and then my younger daughter is six in first grade. So you really can, kinder to, to fifth grade, have the ideal age range with things like the coding starter kit. Now, these things are all on sale right now. So run over and purchase them there. I mean, like, I think the coding starter kit right now is 40% off, which is huge. You guys know it's the holiday season. It's a great time to be purchasing these things because they do tend to go on sale. So something else that I did love about the coding starter kit is that while it is one box of goodies, it is actually three games because it goes like beginner, intermediate, and advanced, meaning that your kids at any stage they're at can really get a, something out of this and then have some room to grow, which I personally think is awesome and amazing. So huge shout out to the people over at Osmo, huge shout out to celebrating National STEM slash STEAM Day. Again, you guys know, I, I really think it's quite valuable for all children to be able to have something that is hands-on. I personally love an easy approach. You guys who've been here, you know that. If I can do something in a game, if I can do something simply, I am going to choose that route every single time. And again, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you how you could save some money doing that because you guys know I, I like to save some money for other things. Maybe, maybe more games, maybe more homeschool materials, maybe more vacations, maybe more trips to science museums. You never know. So don't forget that really and truly with just a little bit of effort and by choosing to ask those open-ended questions by allowing your children just a little hint of struggle to get into the problem-solving mode, you really can make anything, any experience, um, anything that they can get their hands on into a STEAM activity. And it is so important, so, so, so important for your children's sake. And again, I know that you know this because you're homeschoolers and you are people after my own heart. So I know that you understand the value of education. I know that you understand the gravity of making sure that our children are prepared for, again, whatever path they choose to pursue in the world. It doesn't matter what it is, one of the STEAM topics will come into play for them in later life. So by introducing it early, 
in a fun manner, effectively, you can set them up for success in whichever path your children choose. Again, you wouldn't think it, but chemistry was huge in my cosmetology career. So keep that in mind. Know that it can be fun. Know that it can be genuinely as simple as throwing a ball up and asking the questions of why it comes back down. Know that you can mix colors for color theory. Know that you can have fun with this right along your kids. Again, guys, they don't have to know that big learning is taking place. They don't have to suffer through it. They don't have to just read a book. You don't have to just, um, you know, show them a video. It can be hands-on, it can be fun, it can be real engaging learning that everyone is enjoying. And it certainly shouldn't be limited to your school hours. So have fun with it. Introduce the STEAM topics early, and easily with the help of such products like Osmo. Guys, I hope that you found any of this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I totally changed the posting plan, but I like a theme. I like a theme, and I think Steam is good enough. So, guys, have a great day. Go celebrate Steam Day. Let me know. Write it down to the comments. What are you doing to celebrate? Are you doing anything fun and extra? If not, what are you doing that you didn't think was applicable to Steam Day, because I need to know, okay? I'm gonna post here, I'm post over at Instagram, wherever you wanna share with me. If you wanna send pictures, Instagram will be better, but let me know, okay? Let me know what you're doing to celebrate things like this, and are you actively celebrating them? Are you doing something fun and crazy and wild with your kids? Because I am all for that, I'm here for that. You guys know I am here for that. So, okay, total sidebar, something that we did the other day. So we had dry ice for a Halloween party, and um, one, it's always so fun. Two, it was like kind of hard to buy because like we, they didn't know how to sell it. I didn't know how to buy it. It was like a whole weird thing. Anyway, so we got it all worked out, um, get it home, we use it for our purpose and we still had it the next day. So then it's like, what can we do with this? We put it in um, water and watched it bubble out and we played with the bubbles and the uh, steam that it emits. We talked about the is it lamination process? I think the lamination process. We talked about what it was. We talked about why we couldn't keep it in a closed cooler. We put some in a bottle and put a balloon on top and it blew up the balloon. And then the balloon sunk to the ground because guess why? CO2 is nine times heavier than oxygen. We got to play with this. It was so fun. We had such a great day. We put it in a closed water bottle and waited for it to explode, but I think we'd waited too long. We didn't have the water warm enough. It was like a whole thing. It didn't explode, but I do have a side by side. I'm gonna insert some of this because it was so amazing and fun. Um, we have a side by side of the bottle. Like the bottle went from like being a water bottle shape to like being like a light bulb. It was crazy. Um, moral of this story, okay? Every day there's an opportunity to be doing some of this all the time and take it, enjoy it, have fun with the kids, make it early, make it easy. Um, and really set them up for success because in this day and age, whether they go, you know, heavy into the arts, the sciences and the maths and the engineerings, whether they go heavy into that or not, this is the direction the world is going in. Everything is going to have more science involved in it because we're just in that kind of like amazing scientific age where things are really growing and going by leaps and bounds. So set your kids up for success and start those babies early. Bye guys.